Are you curious about the 3-6 profile and what this little fraction looking number means for you? Well, if so, don't worry because you're in the right place. And by the end of this video, you'll learn the answers to the following questions. What is the 3-6 profile? What are the characteristics of the 3-6? What's the public role and leadership style of the 3-6? And what are the keys to health and happiness for 3-6s? We'll even look at an example of a famous 3-6 that you might know, just so you can see how this might be lived out in real life. So if you enjoy this video and want to continue to learn and deepen your understanding of human design, I'd be so grateful if you could show me some love, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Hey everyone and welcome back. My name is Crystal Alferrero. I'm founder of the Human Design Academy and I help people like yourselves make sense of the human design system. So to continue with the profile series, today we'll be looking at the 3-6 profile. So if you're ready to explore more, let's just dive in. So what is the 3-6 profile? Well, the 3-6 profile is that of the martyr role model. And similar to the 6-3, they can experience a very intense first 30 years of their life where they're constantly bumping into things and learning through trial and error and really discovering what works and what doesn't. For example, they might find themselves jumping in from job to job or relationship to relationship and moving from one place to another in order to make their own discoveries about life and gain wisdom around you know, what works for them and what doesn't. And because of this third line nature, they'll likely continue to you know, discover and go on this journey to find themselves and experiment with life even throughout their 30s and well into their 40s. Also like the 6-3, they may feel like they've lived so many lifetimes in just this one and because of their many experiences, they have the potential to become some of the wisest of the role model profiles because they never stop discovering throughout their lifetime. And if they've been giving themselves that permission to live their processes correctly and explore and embrace learning from mistakes and their discoveries, they develop this strong adaptability and resiliency to any obstacles that might come their way. And to understand why, we're gonna break down the components of the 3-6 profile. So what does a 3-6 profile consist of? Well, the 3-6 profile consists of the conscious line three martyr and the unconscious line six role model, which come together to create this martyr role model profile. And just to give you a little recap, each of the six lines of the hexagram have a specific frequency or flavor, and it's in this unique combination that the profile is created. Unlike the 6-3 profile, which does consist of the same hexagram line makeup, you'll notice that the position of the hexagram lines in the 3-6 are basically inverted, which does change a few things in terms of how it's experienced and lived throughout their life. And also it changes their trajectory and destiny that they walk in their life. First, in the 3-6 profile, it's the third line martyr archetype that represents the conscious personality, the mind, and how they think, because it's the top number of this fraction. This is the part of them that's more experiential, um, that has a more trial and error nature in their learning process. And this is someone who needs to experience things for themselves in order to find their truth and in order to find what doesn't work for them and what does. This is also the side of their nature that is conscious to them. In other words, they tend to be more aware of this side of their nature at first, and they can easily identify with it because it's who they think they are. Secondly, the sixth line is their role model archetype, and this represents their unconscious design, their body, and their physical experience because it's the bottom number of this fraction. This is essentially the wise Buddha archetype and the part of them that goes through this unique three-stage life process where the first 30 years of their life until their Saturn return are experienced as this third line martyr through discovery, through this trial and error process. The second stage involves taking a step back from the chaos and jumping into different experiences to look at the big picture, right? Or as we say in human design, getting on the roof to get a different vantage point of life. And from here, they observe and reflect and integrate all the lessons that they've learned from that first stage. However, unlike the 6-2 and the 4-6 profiles, they never fully get this big break and they never fully get onto the roof and stay in observation mode for too long because that third line, that martyr, that experiential side drives them to get in 
into all the action, into all the fun that's happening below them and engage with life. And finally, all of this leads them to evolving into the great role model and sharing wisdom with others in that third stage of their life. They're here to be an example to the rest of us of what it means to be a differentiated and authentic being and live their own authentic path and really lead us by example at around the age of 50 or you know, by the time that their Chiron return hits. So this is the side of their nature that you know they don't have conscious access to, nor is it something that they might be aware of at first, especially in those first 30 years of life. They might be completely unaware of this sixth line nature, you know, this part of them that is here to be a role model because it doesn't really reveal itself until after their Saturn return. Because remember, they are living pretty much as a third line um, martyr throughout that first stage. And because it represents their unconscious body, it's kind of like that automatic script that moves them throughout life without their conscious awareness of it. So they might find their you know, third line martyr um, you know, continues to drive them and want to go head first into new experiences. Whereas on the other hand, their six line body just wants to sit back and relax and observe. So it's really, really important for them to discern, especially with their strategy and authority, which experiences are correct for them, for them to experience and to head into and learn from. Lastly, one of the biggest differences between the 6-3 profile and the 3-6 profile is that the 6-3 is what we call a left angle transpersonal profile and has a path that's more other focused and transpersonal in nature. Whereas the 3-6 profile, the one that we're talking about right now is what we call a right angle personal profile. And it has a more personal destiny, a personal life path. In other words, they're here to focus on their own personal discovery, personal self-discovery and self-growth. So sometimes they might appear to others um, as being more self-absorbed in their own process and even being, you know, immersed in their own process to outsiders in comparison to their 6-3 counterparts. So again, there's nothing wrong with one or there's not one that's better than the other. They're just different. They're different trajectories and different focuses in life. Your profile is something that you also grow into over time. And it said that in theory, the needs of the conscious line often need to be fulfilled first in order to live out the highest expression of that unconscious line. So in this case, a 3-6 needs to learn how to embrace their third line experimental nature and learn to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, get comfortable with their discovery process and making mistakes. And that's truly how they discover what works for them and what doesn't. But of course, at the end of the day, both of these sides of their nature work together. Um, they work side by side and the way that you'll live out the highest potential of your profile is simply by following your personal strategy and authority. So next, what are the characteristics of the conscious line three of their profile? To give you a deeper understanding of the third line, the third line is designed to discover how to navigate the material plane by bumping into things through trial and error, through this discovery process that allows them to learn what works for them and what doesn't. And because of this, they can become some of the most adventurous and and most adaptable and resilient out of the lines because they're so used to, you know, quote unquote, failing and picking themselves back up again. They become very resilient when obstacles come their way. So this conscious side of them naturally, you know, bumps into things and maybe wants to go headfirst into things and makes accidental discoveries at times. And this is how they come to their own truth and their conclusions about life. These are also people that are often going where people don't, you know, people that are exploring new um, horizons, if you want to say it that way. And this is what makes them pioneers in their respective fields, right? They're constantly making new discoveries and gathering wisdom through experience that they can share with others. The third lines have a bonding strategy of what we call bonds made and broken. So when something isn't working out, there's this tendency to just break off the relationship or bond and move on to the next thing. So you can see this a lot with a lot of third lines who may have gone through many different relationships or maybe even jobs in their lifetime. On the lower expression of the martyr, they might be ungrounded in their trial and error and either be accident prone or just not learn 
learn from their mistakes and find themselves in a lot of chaos. And this can happen if they're not grounded in their decision making, if they're maybe making decisions from this place of urgency, fear, scarcity, as opposed to being connected with their personal authority. They might even have escapist tendencies and run away from their problems in this unbalanced state and they might even be stuck in this fear of making mistakes if they've been deeply conditioned to believe that making mistakes is bad and therefore they stop themselves from you know making the risks that they need to make in order to find that that fulfillment in their lives and also gather the experiences that lead to the wisdom that they're here to learn and also share with others so like i mentioned earlier the unconscious line six has a unique three-stage life process where they eventually evolve into this role model for others. And in that first stage, so that first 30 years of their life, it's lived as a third line martyr, just like I explained, you know, constantly sampling life and bumping into things. And the purpose of this stage is to help them gather the life experiences that they need as they move on to that second stage to reflect on and to observe and to you know heal from as well and it's in the second stage that goes from around the ages of 30 to 50 that this is a time of, like I said, reflection and observation. And I think I might've mentioned this earlier in this video, but we use this analogy of climbing up onto the roof in that second stage in order to get that higher vantage point, in order to get that um, bigger vision, that bigger picture. And this is a time for them to heal, to reflect and transform their experiences into wisdom that can be shared with others, especially as they step into that third stage as a role model. And so that third stage, um, you know, by the age of 50, around their Chiron return, this is when they're here to really bloom into that full potential. So it's not to say that you're not here to be a role model before you hit 50, but it's just saying that there is so much more to come. And when they do come back off the roof, this is when they integrate with everyone else again. This is where they reach the peak of their greatness and share all the wisdom that they've gained and gathered throughout the years. And this is the time that they use that wisdom to experience life in a new way and lead by example. This is their highest expression, right? They're basically a role model who's here to inspire others. Um, and lead by example. In a lower expression of the sixth line, it can look like someone who's just bored um, and maybe just impulsively jumping in to things, especially in that first stage of their life, or maybe even in later stages, it might look like being pessimistic or distant um, and detached from what actually matters to them and what actually matters in life, right? And what brings them meaning and purpose, especially if they haven't taken the time to really integrate and heal from those experiences that they've had maybe early on in their life path because at the end of the day, they're here to role model, to be a model of what it's like to live out their truth and live out their authenticity in this world, which is all based in that foundation of self-awareness and self-acceptance. So if you have a 3-6 profile, let me know in the comments down below how you experience your profile and let me know if you resonate with any of the things that I just mentioned. So what's the public role and leadership style of the 3-6 profile? So first, let's take a look at the third line public role and leadership style, which is based Basically to be a pioneer, this is their public role, and their leadership style is that of an anarchist. And so the anarchist is basically, like I said, um, rejection of any institutionalized order. In other words, there's this rebellious side to the third line that you know maybe needs to break rules in order to see what works and what doesn't, right? And in that, they become this pioneer of moving towards maybe newer or more effective paths that none of us have maybe um, not none of us, but you know, where other people may not have explored or considered, right? So in that they become these rebellious leaders or these, um, I'm going to say rebellious influences to show us new ways of moving, new things to move towards. On the other side of that, we have the sixth line. And so the sixth line's public role is that of a leader, specifically a leader that leads by example, and their leadership style is that of an administrator. And this is basically the ability to share and allocate power, right? And most importantly, when I say lead, it is leading by example. So it's not necessarily them needing to, uh, 
you know, be the, this authority that takes things by the reins and tries to make everyone else follow. I see three sixes as being here to be a living example of what it means to just do things differently, right? To follow our own paths, to follow our own truths, even if it doesn't make sense to others and live as ourselves, even if this veers off the linear path or mold of what we've been taught. Now, what's the key to health and happiness for three sixes? Well, for three sixes to thrive, it's really important for them to be grounded and guided by their strategy and authority in order to help them discern which experiences and transitions and changes are correct for them to invest their energy into. There may be this innate desire to just wanna jump into everything. And this is what can save them from initiating things or jumping into experiences out of this fear, urgency, and scarcity. And this is what allows them to make sure that what they are investing their time and energy into is actually something that's gonna be, you know, aligned for them to learn from or experience and bring them meaning and purpose and satisfaction um, in their life and also help them avoid a lot of unnecessary stress and exhaustion. Secondly, it's important for them, especially early on in their process, to learn that it's okay to make mistakes and to not feel shame for them, but rather see them as opportunities for learning because at the end of the day, mistakes are simply discoveries about what works and what doesn't. And to wrap up this video, we're gonna look at an example of a famous 3-6 that you might know. Um, and today we're gonna be looking at Mark Wahlberg. He is a 3-6 sacral generator on the right angle cross of consciousness. And he's of course an actor, he's a former rapper, and you can definitely see his double line three show up in his early life. He had a pretty troubled past if you aren't aware of what happened or his background. And he's someone that developed a drug addiction by the time he was 13. He dropped out of high school at 14 and then he was convicted for theft, for assault, and even some racially sorry, racially motivated hate crimes when he was 15. And so for all of these crimes that he committed when he was younger, he did spend some time in jail and he described his time in jail as this turning point for him. You know, when he got out of jail, this is when he started his rapping career. A few years later, um, this is when he got into acting as well, a few years after that. So again, in his youth, you can definitely see that trial and error nature of his third line, bumping into things in order to learn from life. And of course, you know, having that third line <laughs> doesn't excuse anyone's behavior and the harm, and especially in his case, you know, it doesn't excuse his behavior and the harm he did for others. But unfortunately for third lines, um, making mistakes and discoveries can look like being that toxic person in someone else's life can look like doing the unforgivable or getting into deep trouble before they learn. As a fellow third line who has made a lot of mistakes, you know, I am absolutely not a saint. <laughs> um, you know, I empathize with him. I have done a lot of things that I cringe at looking back as well. And, you know, in that way, I do feel compassion for him and I see the humanness in him in making those mistakes. I feel like being a third line can be really tough sometimes because society doesn't believe people can change. Um, society tends to, as a whole, tends to see mistakes as bad and shameful and irreversible, especially now with cancel culture. So it becomes really important for third lines to understand their process and ultimately be compassionate with themselves because unfortunately you may not always get that compassion from the people around you. The best you can do is just be accountable for your mistakes and especially if it affects other people. But at the same time, um, it's important to get the lesson from it, to learn from it and to not get stuck in that shame and in that self-loathing and needing that external validation or forgiveness before you can learn to forgive yourself and move on, right? We simply need to show that we've learned um, to ourselves, especially, by not repeating the past mistakes. So anyways, going back to Mark, once he turned 30, you can kind of start to see that six line part of his nature emerge. You know, he starts to slow down a bit. He started dating his 
future slash current wife, who he's still together with to this day. They had four kids together. He essentially became this family man. And he also started the Mark Wahlberg Youth Foundation to support inner city youth. And this is a, a foundation that still runs to this day. He entered this um, this third stage, so after the age of 50, after the, his Chiron return. Um, and we actually haven't seen him get into any of the same problems he had when he was a teenager. He's been in a lot of movies, um, a lot of family movies, comedies. So you can kind of see how things settled and dramatically changed for Mark when he made that decision. And when he started discerning and being more wise about what experiences he was gonna jump into and how he learned from those experiences at the end of the day. And I think you can still see his third line trial and error um, nature and his bonds made in broken nature beyond his 30 years as well, but it manifested in more productive ways, more healthy ways, and specifically through his experimentation with businesses, through entrepreneurships, entrepreneurships through his businesses um, as an entrepreneur and may also investments that he's made you know you can I don't know if you remember Wahlburgers but this was a burger chain that he started with his brothers and it became pretty well known at a certain time and if you look at his Wikipedia pro profile you can see the list of different business and interests he has um, and I guess we'll see over time how this third stage really unro unravels and unfolds for him so we've now come to the end of this video and if human design is something that's been calling you to learn more deeply about and if it's something that you want to add to your skill set as a coach or a service provider or even start a meaningful career or business in human design this is exactly what I train my students to do inside the Human Design Academy's Reader Certification Program. We go beyond the information you've learned about on this channel and actually help you build the confidence and skills to analyze and synthesize and apply and really deliver human design in the most empowering way possible and in a high vibe and an incredibly supportive community. So if this is something that feels aligned and correct for you, I invite you to click the link down in the description below to learn more and to get started in your journey right away. And this brings me to the end of this video where we answer the following questions. What is a 3-6 profile? What are the characteristics of the 3-6 profile? What's the public role and leadership style of the 3-6? And what are the keys to health and happiness for 3-6s? So if you enjoyed this video, I'd be so, so grateful if you could show me some love, hit that like button and subscribe to continue learning more about the wonderful, incredible human design system. So with that said, have an amazing rest of your day or evening and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.